the app as well. Enough to get by. Go on. The box. So it goes just wide. All right. I'm going to ask that everyone mute, and actually that's part of the ground rules I was going to share. Um, so let's go ahead and start because we do not have a lot of time. We want to make sure that we focus on some of the action pieces that we need to take um, today. Um, thank you all so much for making the time. I know this is not the most opportune time to hold a meeting Monday morning at 10 a.m. We're starting off the week, but here we go. All right. Um, So thank you. Um, we want today what we want to accomplish is um, just welcoming everybody, uh, an overview of what the legislation does. We want to make sure to get the reaction from the current commissioners, reaction from our public housing residents, and plan some next steps and action items as um, just so we can move along um, the most uh, in the best way. Um, some ground rules that we have are please stay muted until recognized. Please raise your hand either virtually with a little hand. Up, raise your hand. Uh, please be respectful of others. And let's make sure to give speaking priority to the public housing residents. All righty. So I'm going to go over quickly what this legislation uh, purports to do. Um, this was developed by Brittany Ruffin, who is a lawyer with the Washington Legal Clinic for the Homeless. She will be joining us a little later, but unfortunately couldn't join us at this point in time uh, to share that. But here is what um, it does. It dissolves the Board of Commissioners and creates uh, a Stabilization and Reform Board. It decreases the board from 13 to seven voting members and adds one non-voting member um, from the mayoral administration, uh, from the CFO's office. So it would be actually a total of eight members. It decreases resident representation from four members to one, either um, the president of the resident advisory, uh, the citywide advisory board, or an elected resident council president. It removes the housing choice voucher resident member. It's basically gutting any sort of avenue that residents have to be represented. Removes la the labor rep uh, named by the Central Labor Council. It removes the housing advocacy member named by the DC consortium, consortium of legal service providers. It removes the council appointed member. Um, and it makes all board members mayoral appointees, including the resident threat uh, member. Directors of the mayor's office of budget and performance management and CFO are permanently seated members two administration members, six public mayoral appointee members. Here, initially, you know, we, we thought that this was the bad, the, the bad part, you know, when we heard this, what was on face value in the legislation. And then Britt did some wonderful work to really dig deeper into what this legislation would be. Let me remind folks to please mute if you can. Um, it allows the mayor to immediately appoint five public members without the advice and consent of council. It directs the newly formed Stabilization and Reform Board to provide recommendations to the mayor and the council on how the structure of a successor board of commissioners would later govern the authority with no timelines as to when this returned board of commissioners would be reestablished. It removes a requirement that prohibits members from being officers or employees of DCHA, the federal government or the district government. We've already had some issues with collusion on this board. Removes requirement that prohibits members from being a spouse, parent or child of a DC agency lead, DCHA employee or elected official removes explicit requirement that members must maintain DC residency throughout the term. It removes provisions along um, a vice chair chosen by the board members. It removes a requirement that prohibits members from owing money to the district government. It removes a provision and process for removal of members for official misconduct, conflict of interest violations, and neglect of duty and competence for personal it removes notice requirements for board meetings. 
it removes requirements that each board meeting have time for public comment. So it, it, it takes away any real vehicle that residents have for any sort of redress. And as far as the DCHA operations, it directs DCHA executive director to submit quarterly reports to the mayor and council on progress of DCHA in addressing and remediating the issues identified by HUD. In the um, most recent report, it um, developing and implementing a plan to expedite the leasing of dwellings, uh, units owned, operated, or managed by the housing authority. It uh, identifying individual dwelling units uh, within the housing properties of the authority that are in substandard condition, including oh, the condition of such units to a state of good repair, developing and implementing a plan for the maintenance and ongoing state of good repair or housing property uh, of housing properties of the authority <coughs> and dwelling units within the housing properties and <coughs> management of the wait list for dwelling units. Um, within the housing authority properties. Meeting and training requirements established by members and in the section outlined here. And we can share this information with folks. We just wanted to go over briefly, um, as I mentioned, what this would do. Um, it's, as you can see, it's, uh, in my opinion, it's a play out of the Trump handbook when, you know, um, when they want to change something, they just change the whole thing, right? And get rid of the people who have been saying something is wrong here. So with that said, I want to kick it over to Bill Slover, who's been one of the um, most vocal commissioners on the board. Of course, we're going to hear from all the commissioners that are here. I'd love to hear from, from every single one. Right now, we have Ann Hoffman, who's the labor rep. We've got Janet Parker, who's the elected uh, resident commissioner um, for the senior properties as well as Kenneth Council, who um, is another, the at-large elected uh, resident commissioner. He's also the co-chair of the current board. Um, so Bill, what, what's going on? Well, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, as Danny said, my name is Bill Slover. And as of today, I'm a commissioner of the DC Housing Authority Board. I'm joined by commissioners Council and Parker, two of our elected commissioners, and uh, Commissioner Hoffman, one of our two advocate commissioners. Thank you, Parisa and Daniel and Empower DC for helping us put this meeting together. Your partnership over the years has been invaluable. And as we enter into this latest battle with the mayor, a battle made necessary by her series of core DCHA leadership choices over the eight years, she has had direct control over the agency through her appointments of members of our board and now through an executive director she has hand selected. Eight years that have seen an incredible deterioration of the agency and scandal after scandal after scandal, including the resignation and disgrace of her hand-picked chair, displacement of thousands of residents with little to no hope to returning to their homes anytime soon, millions of dollars mismanaged through contracts, poor management of our properties, the list goes on and on. In this context, the irony of her proposal, her latest proposal to fully consolidate her control and remove all other voices from the agency, the same control that has brought us to this point is certainly not lost on me or any of the commissioners on this call. The idea of removing residents, resident commissioners elected, for them, elected by the very people we serve from their positions, the idea of removing all the voices that have, had have elevated DCHA's plight to the ears of HUD, the idea of silencing all public access to the board of commissioners are not ideas we expect to see in a democratic society. These are blatant attempts to squash the voices that disagree, the voices that speak the truth, the voices of our residents. These actions by the mayor are examples of what's wrong with our democracy. These are examples of how democracy dies, why people lose faith in our leaders. We can't sit by idly and allow the mayor to, without justification and or explanation, blow up a board that even though she controls its voice, was still able to elevate the failures of DCHA to get us to this critical moment that sees reform within reach. 
but at risk of being snatched away by this attempt to silence our movement. So we ask of you three things today. One, reach out to all the members of the DC Council and ask them to vote no on the District of Columbia Housing Authority Stabilization Reform Emergency Declaration of 2022, and ask that they demand the mayor provide a more detailed plan on what she sees as the problems with DCHA and how the proposed new board would solve those problems. Very simple question that has not been answered. Reach out to the mayor and tell her that taking away the voices of residents and advocates on the board is unacceptable. And without those voices, there would be no opportunity for residents to be heard. Number three, demand from both the mayor and the council that any reform process be transparent, including opportunity for public input and to take into consideration the entire leadership of DCHA and not just focus on the board as the potential problem. We need to take a holistic view of the board, of the executive director, of our top staff, of the entire agency to determine a viable path forward. We also ask you to talk to friends, families, neighbors, anybody else who might have a vested interest in this. This is a call to action. There's a very short window of opportunity here. The mayor is so desperate to get rid of the voices that continue to point out the failures of her leadership that she has installed at UCHA, that her hostile takeover of the agency will be completed by tomorrow afternoon if she is allowed to have her way. This is a call to action again, to protect the voices of all public housing residents so they can be heard at the agency whose mission is to serve the very residents she is trying to silence. You just heard Daniel go through the, spe the specifics of this bill. It is incredible what they're trying to do here. They have basically removing all outside influences to this agency as if taking away the noise that's been described is going to somehow solve this problem. So that's my, that's my, that's, that's what I have to say at this moment in time. I appreciate so much all the efforts of everybody here to date. Um, does DCHA need reform? Of course it does. You know, those of us on this call are the ones who have elevated this. So I don't want to consume all the commissioner's time. I appreciate you all listening to me and I'll turn it over to, uh, you know, whomever else on the board wants to talk. But thank you guys so much. I hope we can do something in the next 24 hours. It's, it, it allows us to continue what we've started. So thank you. Thank you, Bill. Commissioners, anybody uh, have anything else to say? And go right ahead. Thank you. I I spent Thursday and Friday while I was in another a meeting of another board I'm on, calling everybody I knew on the council. And I got some relatively positive responses, but nobody who said, come hell or high water, I'm going to vote against this thing. So, but a couple of the members said, what's your alternative? So my real alternative is do nothing. But assuming that something needs to be done in a hurry, which I don't assume, the mayor could put onto the existing board all of the people she has now nominated for her new control board and leave in place the three elected representatives of the residents, the representative of the voucher holders, and um, Bill and myself. And I've sent that suggestion to several of the members of council, haven't heard back from any of them. But uh, she has appointed a couple of people who have some expertise. Um, in particular, the guy who founded MANA, the low cost housing nonprofit. Um, but she can do that without abolishing the board, without removing all of the representatives of um, the elected representatives and the appointed representative of the voucher holders. 
uh, she does say she will name a representative of the residents who will either be the president of the advisory citywide advisory committee or a president of a resident council. So she's got a broad sweep there, but she does nothing whatsoever for the voucher holders who are two thirds or so of the people that we serve. So that's all I'll say, except thank you all for being here and please get to the mayor, get to the council and let them know this is not the way to go. That's right. Thank you, Anne. I want to ask uh, Janet Parker or Kenneth Council, you both are, were, you know, democratically elected uh, into your seats. How does it make you feel? And what are you thinking, you know, about all of a sudden you guys just, you know, the votes didn't matter and your seats don't matter anymore. <clears throat> okay, Ken? Good morning, everyone. It's appalling to say that the city should be united. Um, COVID was a layer to have people set in and try them best, best to do what needs to be done, even as far as the mental health has come to a forefront. The agency, if anyone has been watching us through the years, have always said that we need to use best business practice, and I haven't seen it done. We've gone over a plethora of undeceitful ways that things have been done to the commissioners. Some, some, some of them have and some of them have not but this is not the way to go. We're about using best business practice. And when we call out when you're wrong, you get mad and you wanna dismantle us and put it in a way to sentence us by silencing our voice. You can't, I was an elected in this seat. You don't have a right to take my constitution away like that, period. I'm asking anyone that's listening to call in to your city council, as well as for the city council, to rethink this thing. You don't disband and just move because it's going to cause more damage than a fix. As we say, call to action, each time, just like when we have our BOCs, we can say as an agency what we are doing, but that BOC says differently when you see repeat offenders, not in a way of doing something wrong, but calling us to the rug each 30 days of every month that things have not been taken care of. Small things that may start from a crack that starts from a pilling or a big hole that you have to move. It's, this is not the way to do it. Thank you. That's right, thank you. Commissioner Parker. Well, I was elected. And I was elected to represent the residents in public housing and specifically the very vulnerable residents that are seniors and disabled. <laughs> the DC Housing Authority is wanting to do redevelopment of every single building of all the residents that elected me. And in that process, they will displace and disrupt people's lives. And I have been trying to stand up for the rights of residents to be heard and listened to and to have decisions made in concert with them so that they have input into what happens to them during this process. And I am sure that my insistence on that was not appreciated by those who want to do profit and who wants to do development of market rate apartments and who want to funnel HUD funds into those kinds of projects with no concern at all for the current residents. The DC Mayor's Office on Economic Development isn't an office that is concerned with current resident rights. And they are not necessarily interested in extremely low income or low income uh, people who need housing. And they certainly have shown no interest 
in dealing with the wait list, which of course has been closed for 13 years. Uh, so, so I feel that we are failing in doing our mission as uh, the DC Housing Authority, because I believe our mission is to serve those people. And I believe that that's what HUD has given us money to do, that, that in the HUD mission, their mission is not to do uh, beautiful high-rise apartments for the rich. <laughs> I mean, that's not what HUD gives us money to do. HUD gives us money to help the working families, to help low-income persons, to be able to get the homeless into stable, supportive housing, to be able to provide support for women who are experiencing violence in domestic situation, to help persons who have mental illness have stable housing and support, and to provide a shelter uh, that is stable for young families who need that. That is what I think we are supposed to do. I guess that isn't what others on the board that were mayor appointees believed we were there to do. And from what I can see of the mayor's proposal, she doesn't want that to be the future goal or strategy of the agency. And I find that very disconcerting. I believe that we should not have been re removed without due process. I was elected. The people who elected me believed I would have a three-year term. I've only been in my job for eight months and here I'm being removed, not for cause, but for actually doing what I was put on the board to do. And so I'm asking everyone to go out and ask your neighbors and friends and anyone you know to please contact your city councilmen and tell them to vote no on this proposal. You can certainly exchange me for another, another person if I'm not doing the job you want me to do. You can vote me out. <laughs> you know, you can even remove me for cause while I'm in office. But to completely destroy the actual position that I hold in order to silence the voices of the residents and of the DC public. I, I feel that that is wrong. Thank you, Commissioner Parker. Um, I am going to ask Rosa Burbridge to please uh, say something. She is the uh, president, president of the Citywide Advisory Board. Um, she's got a meeting, another meeting to get to. So I want to make sure to get to her voice, if that's okay, Ms. Rosa. Uh, you know, talk to us, as, as you've heard from the commissioners, as a resident, um, you know, how does this make you feel? As a resident who represents, in theory, uh, you know, many, many, if not all, public housing residents. Thank you, Daniel. And hello, everyone. I was shocked when I saw the report and heard what was going on. And I understand your plight because it's like that of the Citywide Advisory Board. Um, we have been shut out of so many vital meetings. You know, I don't knock anybody, but I see all these other organizations there. <laughs> yet the board has not been invited. Um, I'm finding a little help because I did some research looking up HUD guidelines and I'm wondering is there some guidelines and HUD which will help you likewise that says to be in compliance, the Citywide Advisory Board must be in these meetings. And what they're doing, I feel, is taking our voices little by little, because for so long we have been unfunctional and, excuse me, dysfunctional, that we're not working together as a team. We can see that as the vote. So I, too, encourage everyone to call your councilman, because first, it's these elected 
officials that are leaving. Next, it's going to be the silence of no meaning. Next, it's not going to be an opportunity for you when they're doing testimony to say what is going on. So you have to take this as an awakening. You know, together we are so strong and they're trying to dismantle us. That is the problem. But as a public house resident, public housing resident, we are all unified. I was shocked about the housing choice voucher. What's the difference? They are all to be served by DCHA. And we have to move forward. And even if this passes, we need to be thinking, what is our next alternative? How can we counteract? Because I understand this is an emergency reform that's supposed to only be in effect for 225 days. So when that time expires, what happened next? Do we go back to where we originally was? So I encourage you to please call your councilman, do what you need to do, and let's find a way to resolve this in our favor. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Ms. Rosa. I know we've been joined by Council Member Silverman, so let me um, give uh, yes. Council Member Silverman a little time to say something. Great. Um, well, good morning, everyone. Alyssa Silverman. Um, let me give a dose of reality uh, to what's going on here. Uh, first of all, I appreciate everyone's voice. It's a big group. Uh, and I'm glad that you are fired up about this. Um, so the state of play is that I believe um, the mayor and Chairman Mendelson are working on changing their proposal to get nine votes for it. Um, that's the reality here. Uh, there have been members who have, as Ann Hoffman, Commissioner Hoffman said, express concern. And uh, since everyone knows that my uh, tenure is ending, I have little reason not to be candid at this point. They want to win. The mayor and the chairman want to win. Uh, and this isn't really about winning in terms of structural reform for uh, the housing authority. This isn't about making sure that they're safe sanitary, dignified housing in DCHA communities. This is about winning, political winning. Um, and so I, I don't, I'm not sure what advice to give you guys, honestly. Um, you know, for, uh, I will just say that you can, I understand people's concerns and there are, I think very valid concerns about voices of residents who have three spots on the current board, uh, not uh, adequately having um, a voice and that these are democratically elected uh, members of the board. I think there's adequate concern that um, the two most vocal members of the board um, from the labor and legal advocacy communities are not part of the uh, mayor's proposal or the chairman's proposal. Um, but here's what I will say um, is that this is embarrassing. It's embarrassing for our government. That HUD report was embarrassing. It's, it said to everyone on you know who's watching television, who's reading the Washington Post, that um, this government is letting our residents, especially our most vulnerable residents, live in unsafe, unsanitary housing, and that we've all been in office while this has been happening. And uh, getting back to the political issue here of winning, there. It's not, it's about winning and it's also about saying we're doing something. We're saying to the press and, you know, our constituents that we're doing something about it. And this control board sounds like we're doing something about it. So I'll stop with the political analysis. 
I will just say, I think you need to shift thinking to what the state of current state of play is. So, um, you know, I think Anne is, uh, Hoffman, Commissioner Hoffman is correct that, you know, members, I think are, want, want to hear from you, but they also want to look like they're doing something and addressing the concern. Um, I think that, um, you know, the, as I said, uh, I believe that there is a trying to work with the members who say, well, I don't like this proposal, but maybe about we could do this is sort of the state of play. Here's, here's what I'll just wrap up, uh, Daniel, and say is that I think the initial objection, this has been, as, as Commissioner Slover said, this is not, and, and as um, the executive director, uh, Donald says, this is not a problem that occurred overnight. Um, this has, you know, the unsafe, unsanitary conditions, the lack of compliance with federal and local law, this has happened for eight years. Uh, and, you know, in which the mayor really has had control of the board with six appointee, mayoral appointees, um, and uh, the appointment uh, uh, or the, the presence of the uh, deputy mayor for planning and economic development and appointment of the executive director. So to say that there hasn't been adequate mayoral control is just not true. Um, there's just been an, an unwillingness to address this issue while commissioners like commissioners, resident commissioners uh, and the labor and uh, legal community uh, commissioners have been saying we need to do something. Um, so I, I would say that I still think the argument is we need input. There are thousands of residents who depend on the housing authority and they should have input into the plan. I, I have said to my colleagues, I don't disagree. We should have subject matter expertise on the board. I've been saying this for eight years. That is why I voted against some members, including former, former Chairman Albert and current chair, um, uh, Bussy Reader. Um, but we need to have, we, we need to be, we need to do it right. It shouldn't be an overnight thing or a four night thing. Um, and I think that's really the issue here. And, you know, I, I have a reform bill. Chairman knows I've been working on it. The mayor knows I've been working on it. My colleagues have been working on it. I'm hoping to work with a colleague to move it through next year, which would be a much larger approach uh, than just kind of rearranging chairs on the board. Um, and I will say that I think the ability to have input into the housing authority ends for the council if we approve whatever, uh, whoever occupies these chairs. I think the council needs to have I think the board needs to be independent. We've learned that time and again. We need to have more independence and more council input. I'll stop there. Thank you all for letting me speak. Good to see you all. Thank you, council member. Let me uh, remind folks, a colleague um, shared with me, Lori Leibowitz shared that the last time this housing authority went into receivership, uh, a significant reason was because of mayoral overreach. There was too much mayoral involvement. So, you know, let's be mindful of that. Uh, Parisa is sharing some of the, the information that we're having um, <clears throat> around taking action. Um, Parisa, did you want to go through that? I was going to call on some residents to see, to get a little response. Sure. sure, let's get the residents queued up. And as you're doing that, just, I know people were saying in the chat, you were having a hard time opening this document. Um, one of the key, key things, and we're doing a lot of work right now around racial equity, right? And the city keeps talking about racial equity. 
one of the key principles of racial equity is that you have to in meaningfully involve the impacted people in the decision. There is no equitable outcome if there is not an equitable process. And this bill, not only the, the rush of it, um, you know, excludes impacted people, but the language <laughs> of the bill it, itself excludes them further by removing the notice requirements and the, the time for community comment, the elected representatives um, uh, of impacted people on the board. So I, you know, I think that that's an, another important piece here, just to stand and say, no, this isn't an equitable process. If we want a good outcome, we have to take the time to engage impacted people. Um, Daniel, you can go ahead and, and call on folks. I'm going to move the slide to the one with the contact information. Uh, there was also some comments in the chat about doing a sign-on letter. We can do that. However, I think the most impactful thing would be for everybody on this call right after we get off to individually call and email. You don't need to know every single minute detail. You just need to say this is wrong. We, I want you to vote against. You need to create a solution with public housing residents, not excluding them. Um, and so I'm going to share the phone numbers and emails. They're also available, of course, at dccouncil.gov. Go ahead, Daniel. Thank you, Parisa. I noticed a couple of presidents of resident councils, uh, Shanta Hai. May I ask if you could give us a couple of words around just, you know, you mentioned something in the chat. Um, <clears throat> talk to us about how you're feeling about this drastic change in the representation you have as a president um, on this board. I don't know if she's available. I see a couple of other presidents, Misha Petaway, Ms. Malloy. Anybody want to share anything? Abana? This is um, Ms. Uh, Patricia yeah. Malloy. Call me. Okay, hey, let's let I, I'll, wait, I'll wait. Sean, are you there? Yeah, I wasn't sure if you called. Yeah, me I was just I, wondering. I, uh, yeah, as somebody oh, okay. who's very outspoken. Um, you know, what, what are your reactions to what's happening? Um, yeah, sorry about that. Go ahead, Ms. Abner, I'll, I'll go after you. Oh, okay, I'm patient. <laughs> First, I'd like to say good morning to everybody. And um, this type of movement uh, that the mayor is doing um, with uh, the commissioners and how she's handling this and, and the reason that she's doing it should be very evident to everyone. And um, a lot of people would call this, my grandmother would say, she's really making a gangster move to uh, silent the voices of a lot of people who are not in favor of the things that she wants to move forward with her agenda. And this is very, very, very wrong. I agree with almost everything that I've heard here. My thing is when you do call your uh, council person, I mean, I'm in Ward 1, and when I get out of my second meeting, I'm going to call the council person and write. But the, um, I'm asking, should the statement, we know what this is about, but should the statement be written where when we send out our email to each person, we say, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is why it's wrong, this is not should happen. The same verbiage as we're sending it, but it's from another person, which tells uh, everybody that we are in agreement with this statement here. These are the things that are wrong. These are the things that cannot happen. These are the things that need to change. And if it's worded the same way when a person writes everyone, then it's saying that we are in agreement. Uh, it's just a suggestion. Uh, I'd like to put that on the table and thank you everybody because this meeting here, Daniel, Parisa, is very essential, is very important, and is very critical. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Abhinav. She's, she's also a member of the Citywide Advisory Board. Um, Shanta, did you want to say anything? And I know we've got a, I see a couple of hands raised. We're definitely going to get to you. <clears throat> yeah. So I really feel strongly about this change because as residents, they already don't give us enough time to speak on the issues that happen with us. And I said earlier in the chat that 
there are only a few commissioners that actually care about what's going on with us. And they're on this meeting. And that's Bill Slover, Kenneth Council, Ann Parker, and I mean, Ann Hoffman, my apologies, and Janet Parker. So they're the ones that's calling out, like Bill asked a lot of questions about the land deals. Why are we just giving away land? So if that's the case, why are we giving the land to the residents? Why can't we have our TOPA rights? Why aren't they exercising the, uh, the right to allow us, the residents, to buy our land, redevelop our land, and have the opportunity to stay where we belong? I'm just, I'm sick of being silenced at every turn, every Every time I get a chance or we as residents get a chance to speak out, they find yet one more way to, to, to close the door to, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get this mouse to work. They find one more way to silence us and it's not fair to us. Um, and lastly, I saw Miss Lydia ask the question, can we take the mayor to court if she does this? That's a viable question because we need representation. Who's, who's fighting for us? Because we're, we're scratching and clawing right now fighting for ourselves. So who's gonna fight for us if they change this board? The HCVP voucher holders really don't have any representation as it is, only the public housing residents have representation through their resident council presidents. And the minute that they move, they lose their tenure. Even though they're promising, promising that, you know, under redevelopment, you get to keep your tenure. Just lies upon lies upon lies. And, you know, Honestly, if anybody should be able to create a receivership, it should be the residents because we take care of ourselves, honestly. And that's my two cents. That's right. Thank you, Sean. Um, I know Ms. Malloy wanted to say something, and then I have Ms. Davis and Ms. Bishop. Maybe Ms. Malloy is not available right now. I saw Ms. Davis. Can you hear me? Oh, there she is. Go, go right ahead, Ms. Malloy. Thank you, Daniel, for holding this meeting. And this is how I agree with you 100%. Um, I'm a former Lincoln Heights resident. I was relocated under the new community initiative to the Strand Residency. The Housing Authority has turned their back on Lincoln Heights since I have moved. They have even turned their backs on the replacement units, the voucher here at the Strand Residency. I feel that we were blindsided. We are here in the offsite as public housing residents. We have to pay water, we have to, we have to pay everything. We were lied to. This agency, I'm really hurt behind this decision that they are taking and I just want everyone to hear, this is not personal. I do not trust my council member. I'm in Ward 7 because after listening to the, uh, the hearing that Anita Bonds had last week, to me, our council member is supporting everything that Director Donna is, going, is doing. He also stated, I'm here to support you. I'm here for you. To me, that was a slap in my face as a Ward 7 resident. I have no confidence in my council member. And I'm going to fight to do everything I can for the residents of Lincoln Heights and our offsite. We should say no. The council should say no to this. Really, personally, I feel we should go into HUD, federal HUD receivership leave our commissioners that's in place that we elected, leave them in place. We need a voucher holder to represent us. 
One resident cannot represent voucher, senior, disabled, and family. There is no way. Thank you, Don, um, Daniel, for holding this meeting. I'm just so immersed, mostly hurt at this moment. Thank That's you. That's right. No, it's the, the onslaught of, of pain. It, it is literal pain for public housing. Residents. Ms. Davis, I think you had your hand raised. Keisha Davis? Yes. Thank you. you. Um, thank you to um, Empower DC and everyone that's on the call. Ms. Davis, it appears we have a bad connection. It's hard to hear um, you. Let me go back. First state that I'm a member of Douglas Community Land Trust. Okay. Can you hear me Thank now? You. Yeah, that's can you, hear, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Better. My apologies, everyone. My name is Kaisha Davis. I'm with Douglas Community Land Trust. Outside of being with Douglas Community Land Trust, um, that helps communities exercise their TOPA rights. Um, I'm going to set that aside <laughs> and I'll get back to that if anyone want to comment and find out more about Douglas Community Land Trust. Um, reason why I'm doing that is because I have a lot of information about housing and how residents are being discriminated in the city, being as though my family was one of them. So, um, and along with a story, my family was unlawfully illegally evicted three years ago. I reached out to council member Trayon White. I reached out to the mayor's office. I reached out to Carl Racine's office. We went as far as the White House, no help. So I say to the people that's on the call, I roughly see about a hundred people. This is not good enough. You have a whole city of people that's under siege for housing, dignity housing and their rights. And people are still sitting back and not stepping up. That's not good enough. Just us on the call. And I know what we're doing here today is, is, is the right step forward. We, we got to find out a way to get these people engaged that are hurting the most out here. I look at the homeless population that's out here on the streets. I mean, look at the lady under the Suja Bridge. I mean, how many years was she there and they wrote her off as if she didn't exist? Everybody that drove past Pennsylvania Avenue seen her out there sleeping on the mattress. So what I'm saying is that besides my mom, Annie Davis, that was unlawfully illegally evicted, it continues to still happen today. I have another resident out there right now today that her home is condemned. You reached out to DCRA, you reached out to the mayor's office and it's the same old stories. They don't wanna go up against these slumlords in the city. They have enough housing in the city if they so choose to wanna house people. But according to what the mayor said out of her mouth, some people choose to be homeless. That's improper, that's, in, that's wrong to even, to even state it, even if you think it to state that out your mouth and being an elected official. Again, everyone on the line, please hold your elected officials accountable because if you don't, if the people in the city don't exercise their TOPA rights and don't understand what that means, it's gonna be too late. We already see the new development. It's already too hot, $2,500 for a studio. Who lives like this? Who can, who can afford this? That's right. And if Ms. Davis, continue... I'm sorry to cut you off, um, but uh, um, I know I want I want to make sure to get to Ms. Bishop because I know she has another meeting coming up. So I want to make sure. Is it okay? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Bishop? Yes, good morning, everyone. As some of y'all might know, I go by their good name, and it's an AKA of good trouble. I'm looking at this and going to break it down very simply. The mayor control is like a glass of water full to its flowing over. The public housing tenants, residents are like a glass that has been broken. That she is gonna to continue to sweep us and sweep us to the ground. With anything that she proposes out there, it is to harm us 100%. There's a time that we must all get together and let her know this. And the council members and the representative of councils, we all need to let them know 
that it will not no longer be the same old, same old, because we're going to take our broken glass and build it back up so that we can be qualified, qualified as equal as the highest paying market rate rent there is in Washington, D.C. And bless each and every one of you and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Ms. Bishop. Um, Bruce, I don't know if you wanna walk us uh, through any um, next steps um, we may have. Sure, so I wanna thank everybody who, who's uh, indicated in the chat that you will call an email. I can't um, underemphasize the importance. I We can do a sign-on letter, we can do an automated email action. However, the most impactful thing would be for their phone lines to go crazy right after this meeting, okay? So if you could just carve out the next 15 minutes after we get off the line, call not only your ward council person, but your at-large uh, members and the chairman's office. So remember that's five, five calls to make, right? And the message is very simple. Vote no on the mayor's uh, public housing emergency bill. This is disenfranchising public housing residents. This is taking away representation that public housing residents elected to represent them. This is racially inequitable. A solution, yes, we need a solution. A solution will come when we include, meaningfully include public housing residents, right? This is a false solution. No legislation crafted without impacted people is a real solution. This is a false solution. Um, I also would love to just see by indication maybe of uh, if you could raise your hand or, or if, you, if you need to make some noise. Do we have energy? Do we have willingness to go down to the city council building, uh, 14th and Pennsylvania tomorrow morning and show uh, ourselves in person and uh, work to speak to the council offices in person? Is there 10 of you who would make yourselves available at, at 930 tomorrow morning to do that. Can you indicate um, if you would be willing? So I see it. I see two hands. And I will ask that you can you can message. Thank you for those raising your hands. If you could, um, Daniel, if you want to write down some names, but if you could also um, you know, message Daniel or I either here in the chat or by email, and we will solidify those plans. Tomorrow's agenda is really insane. It's an extremely full <laughs> agenda. This is on the second meeting, which I believe will start in the afternoon around two o'clock, but it's lower on the agenda. So we'll see if we can hang out until the vote. But more so than that, I think we need to just be visible, uh, walk around the halls, talk to whoever we can talk to, um, and then see wh where we are at that point. I, I, I think that, um, you know, some people are talking about amendments, talking about uh, possibly uh, I know Robert White's office has talked about um, in, an amendment to reinstate some resident elected commissioners. Um, however, again, I think it's a false solution that, you know, that may be slightly better than what the mayor's proposing, but again, the process is inequitable. And so therefore the outcome is inequitable. There is no equitable outcome when we rush something and exclude the people most impacted. There is no way. So what we could be doing now is calling for uh, meetings at public housing properties. We could be uh, calling for town halls of working sessions, and we could making, be making sure that in, as the council reconvenes in January, that a, a reform legislation or legislation that supports public housing residents is, is top on their agenda. But this is not the way to do it. Um, so tomorrow, we're, what we're going to have to do, I'm looking at the chat, what we're going to have to do is see how, how uh, we get response from you all. But I think right now the plan would be to go to the Wilson building at 930 a.m. Um, I believe the council will be in the breakfast meeting at 10 or around that time. So we'd be you know, literally waiting for them <laughs> to come out of the breakfast meeting and to speak to them at that time. We'd also be going um, office to office and trying to get information from their staff. Uh, about where they're leaning and again just press impressing upon them how inequitable this is right and thank you all for the um for the hand raises and willingness to participate in that again if you can today as soon as we get off this call do the calls and emails right um encourage others to do the same we will do our best to uh stay on top of any any 
you know, amendments and, and news like that that is um, being um, made available to us. Right now, I think Robert White's the only one who has announced his intention to do an amendment. But again, a, a rushed emergency with exclusion of the impact of people, there is no solution in that. This is a false solution. We do need to take the time, even if it's on a quick timetable, a couple of months, but we do need to take the time to include impacted people or else this is an inequitable uh, process. Daniel, um, I, think, I think the hands we have up are people who are willing to come to the council tomorrow. I believe uh, so. I've captured just about everyone who raised their hand and who said something in the chat. Um, so thank you all. We'll be following up shortly with some more plans. But as Teresa mentioned, I mean, the biggest thing would be for us to be there at 9.30 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, let me What's mention not? one other thing. The chairman and Anita Bonds have signed on to the mayor's bill, so they've indicated their full support. Um, we are also calling for Anita Bonds to be removed as chairperson of the housing committee. This is another thing that we could bring up tomorrow, but we'll definitely be asking for your support over the next few weeks as the chairman um, creates the new committee assignments. Uh, we cannot wait another moment. Uh, we need strong leadership on the housing committee. You all know this. Um, she's been there this whole time, as you all, um, public housing residents have testified at the hearings and brought to light uh, the extreme failures and, and nothing has been done. And now she's signing on, uh, of course, to the mayor's bill because she's essentially the mayor's placeholder um, on the council and supports anything the mayor wants to do. So. Uh, we we do need to tackle that, and then we invite you all to um, join Empower DC. We will make sure we hold an action planning meeting to uh, take this to the next step, and we will invite all of those who uh, attended today's meeting. We need to make sure as the council gets reconstituted in January that we are we are out in force and making sure that public housing residents, first and foremost, are being heard and protected, and that we tackle these. Uh, uh, um, housing issues for the lowest income in our city. The attorney general has come out against the mayor's uh, bill as well. Um, Carl Racine has come out against it. I'm trying to see what else I missed in the chat. but um, And I think for those who've talked about um, receivership, you know, the possibility of the uh, federal government appointing a receiver for it to take over the housing authority, uh, I think, you know, from from, from what I'm hearing from residents and from advocates that that is a better solution than the mayor's <laughs> bill uh, because we don't trust the mayor to not be using this to further her political agenda, her development agenda. And what we have not heard her talk about is appointing people who are actually expert at providing safe, decent housing for very low income people and families, not people with development expertise people with expertise at providing safe, affordable housing. Daniel, you wanna take it over and move us to the next bill number? Yeah, I mean, I think we, I mean, I think we have wrapped it up. I just wanted to, I just got an email from another president of a resident council, Ms. Hardesty, who's the president over at, um, oh my God, why am I blanking on the name? Um, but um, at Langston, sorry, yes. But she's saying, you know, this is a hostile takeover. It, it's very obvious what this is. Uh, and we have to take action. So I, I think it's it's safe to say that many, many um, of the resident leaders and residents of public housing Hi. are aware that, you know, what this is really about and that they'll be losing their rights. So um, <clears throat> unless, are, are there any questions? Anybody want to, uh, you know, give any input? Um, we can open up the time for that. Karen? And let's try to be brief as possible, just just so we can get on, uh, you know, making these calls and emails um, that we have. Go, go right ahead, Karen. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much, and thank you for holding this meeting, which really is an emergency. Can you please say the bill number and put it in the chat? Also, I do not understand why you're not going to HUD's. Um, Office of um, OI, OIG office um, to um, because this violates the findings of the HUD report, which is that the mayor is has too much control. 
and this is just increasing her control. Isn't it a violation of the HUD report? Why not go back to HUD um, on this? Thank you, Karen. Yes, those, that is in the plan. So we, we have that. Um, as you realize, this has been moving super fast. So, uh, but yes, th there are discussions of that. Bill, I think you had your hand up. Uh, no, I'm, I'm okay. I, I just wanted to, I just wanted to, well, I'll take this opportunity. I just wanted to, again, thank everybody for, uh, for, for everything that's going to happen today and, and thank everybody for their, uh, for their attention to this matter and, and understanding how important it is. And, you know, the irony of the last time I'll say the irony of the solution moving forward is to take away the voices that got us to this point um just cannot be lost or i think that's the biggest message to send uh and as theresa said and daniel said and everybody else has said you know this is no way to run a government this is no way to show leadership this is a problem that took a long time to get here and it kind of cannot be solved through this process and so hopefully we can prevent this from happening and, and come up with a more um uh, controlled solution that provides uh, at least an opportunity to fix what's what's ailing the agency and so thank you for all your help. That's all. Thank you, Bill. Uh, William, I think you had your hand up. That was from before. Oh, okay. Um, LaShawn Potts, you have your hand up? And there might be somebody that can join us. Um, how about Harry? Yeah, I just wanted to, Daniel, to, to thank you for pulling this meeting together, um, thank you Empower DC, and also just to reinforce what you've been saying and Paris has been saying about calling. Uh, I worked on Capitol Hill for a long time and worked in a congressional office, and I, I'm sure that uh, Councilmember Silverman seen the same thing. When your phone rings off the hook, you pay attention. So if people get off this call immediately and make short calls to those uh, council members to represent them, all you have to say is, I oppose this, this is a bad idea. It doesn't take you more than two, two seconds to make your point. And they sit there and they take off those phone calls. So you don't have to have all your points really well um, established, just make the phone call. So I just, just wanted to back you up on that again. Thank you for pulling together this call. Thank you so much, Harry, really appreciate it. Well, everyone, I mean, I think we've got uh, some uh, next steps uh, carved out. We want to thank you for attending um, this meeting. Um, please, please, please make those calls, make those emails. Um, if you can email me, uh, my email is daniel at empowerdc.org uh, for tomorrow, for being there tomorrow. Uh, we'll coordinate all that as, as the day moves through um, and we'll reach out to you. I think I have all the names. I'll also follow up with you as well. Um, and yes, let's just continue to fight this fight because, you know, it, it's this first and, and what's next, right? So let's make sure that we put this um, power into check. Thanks, everybody. So Thank let's you, use Neil. this as an opportunity to ramp up our activism, right? Okay, this is what happens when they think that they can get over on us. So let's let's show them. Let's show them what we're made of. Appreciate Thank you, you all. Thank you to the all public right. housing leaders. Thank you to the resident commissioners. We appreciate you. We, we, we're sorry that you're being treated so unfairly. It's not okay. And we're here to stand with you. Thanks, everybody. And I want to thank all my residents uh, for electing me to my office. I have only had the opportunity to serve you for eight months. I have obviously kicked up uh, some, ter some turmoil at the head of the agency for asserting that residents do have rights and they do need to be respected and treated with dignity. And we need to be able to provide for all of our citizens to have housing because housing is a human right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So much. We'll all get on Thank those you. phone phone calls and emails now. We'll talk to you real soon. Thanks so Thanks much, everybody. Everyone. One Take up care. the phones. Bye. Bye.